Juvencio Sanchez Sandoval was a Mexican laborer known as a bracero. He and his wife Felipa are from the state of Jalisco. He came to work in the fields of California's Central Valley in 1953 at the age of 26. Braceros were given permits to work in agriculture and even in the railroads during and after World War II. They were given permits by the U.S. government in order to work here seasonally. Así estuvimos hasta año y medio renovando contratos. Después de año y medio, ya tuvimos que irnos a México. He has fond memories of his life as a bracero, but says they endured many abuses in the farms they worked, including low wages and long hours. En aquel tiempo, me acuerdo que hasta nos estrellaban, se venía con piojos, fue la realidad. Así fue la realidad. Nos, nos bañaban de polvo para que se pulgas o piojos o algo, de, de, de cementarnos, porque a nosotros nos tocó eso, a mí me tocó eso también. Immigrants were sprayed with DDT, a powerful insecticide, to prevent any diseases in the barracks where they were often housed in large groups. After several years as a guest worker, Mr. Sandoval eventually became a U.S. citizen. Braceros came from every corner of Mexico. This mural painted by students depicts the struggles of the braceros as they left their families and headed to an unknown land. Luis Magaña Acevedo is the son of a bracero from the state of Michoacán. He has been an activist for farm workers for most of his life and is the director of the Centro de la Cultura Campesina, or the Farm Workers Cultural Center in Stockton, California. Según eso, no más iba a ser mientras duraba la guerra. He says the first guest worker program actually started during World War I. The Bracero Project in 1942 was the second effort by the government to use foreign labor. Y fue en 1942 cuando llegó el primer grupo de 1500 aquí al condado San Joaquín y este y tra para trabajar en el sugar beet. He adds that 5 million permits were issued between 1942 and 1963. The first 1,500 of them were issued to braceros that came to San Joaquin County to work picking sugar beets. The need for foreign labor continues to this day. A program that is hardly known, referred to as the H-2A, continues to bring in temporary laborers legally to the U.S. As long as the need for cheap labor continues, so will the need to bring in Mexican farm workers.